Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Spotlight Over the City. I am your host, Stan Long, along with the lovely Terry T. Bum Long. Let's Woo! rock. Man, every week we got a good one for you. Of course, we got another great show for you again this week. Uh, we got a great lineup. But um, first of all, I'd like to shout out the whole DMV, everybody at the sound of my voice. Thank you guys for tuning in. The whole Facebook gang, thank you guys for rocking with us every single week. Yes. Uh, I see everybody, man. LA, Philly, Detroit, Chicago. They say you better not leave out Charlotte, North Carolina. So we got you, Charlotte in the building. That's Let's right. Go. That's right. Hey, everybody. Happy Thirsty Thursday. We've got Thursday. A, a great show lined up for you guys today. We have got, you know, she was on show a couple of months ago but she is back with some updates on what's going on and how she's handling things for Black Writers Weekend 2021. We've got Tamika New joining the show a little later and then also we have got actor Mark McKinnon and he has been in some amazing products also in a double wife so we're going to talk about that soon. Yes. Doing big Closing out there. today's show though y'all. I'm super excited about it. I'm the Crawley coming to the show yes. finally. That's Girl my boo. Yes, That's yes. right. That's right. So we have got an amazing show lined up for you guys today. But first, I name that song. What you got? Sweet. You've been doing good going first, so I think you should just go first. Because you've been doing good. I think I'm intimidated. The last, the last I think you've been intimidated, sir. That's Tell never you. it. That's, Shame to Put them on your feet. That's never right. it. Let's be honest. But since you so on point, let me see you do it. What's your song? All right, let's rock. Do it. All right, Wait, let me explain listen. the song first. Explain because you need to listen. Go, you need right? to listen too because you never go by the rules. This what our this segment is named that song, and what we're supposed to do is give you about five to six uh, words or lyrics from a song, and you are to guess it and tell us who sings it. Stan usually sings <laughs> half of the song because he doesn't have another way for you all to guess it. Well, now nah, I'm a singer, so sometimes it's hard for me to pull back. Oh, once you I get, get so into it. I'm a, that's my crap. Oh. So once I jump out there, ah, they call me the, okay. voice, the voice to make the a moist. The voice that makes so them moist. I don't make a moist because I hold back. I make a moist because I jump all the way out there. Panties, bras, that kind of stuff. So, yeah. Oh, man. So anyway. But again, you should always put your disclaimer out there. The what? only women that be throwing their drawers and stuff when you sing, they like uh, 70, 80 and up. What? Eight and age. And Are you, you know it. You know it. I'm going to let you have that. Not nobody my good. age. As long as it make that. you feel good. Well, actually, they're younger than you. No, they're not. But I mean, if you make, if Baby, it make do you, your song. If it make you feel Go. good. Then do your cool. song. <clears throat> now, we need the name of the artist and the song. You have to, do you it. Have to name the artist and the song. Okay, okay let me see. Y'all ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. Which one? Is my camera here? Yes. Do it. I don't know. All right. Go. Okay. Do it. <clears throat> I want to love you, yeah, 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 over and over okay, again. That's, it. that's all you do. I want to no, see, see you, what you like. That's it. Like in bed. No, no, that's it. Oh, don't that's go. all. You only do the first line. Man, it'd be tough. Okay, so Stan tough, just Terry. did his song. So those of you who know what that song is and know who hold, sings hold it. Your, hold your panties. Hold your, don't take your bra off. Leave your bra <laughs> on right now because I know the voice. Don't do it. You, okay. We got company. So, yes, we got company. Yeah, keep, oh, hmm. Yes, please keep going. Keep your panties um, together. Listen, um, that song right there, put in the comments what the song is and who sings it. Who's the I artist? I know who it is. What's the name of the song? And if y'all want me to uh, cheat and tell you, you're going to have to. You bring me some glazed donuts, fresh glazed donuts, <laughs> and I got you. All, All right, right, I'm ready on, for mine. Now. And we okay. need you to sing a song that at least one person is familiar. Everybody always guesses my songs. All right, let's rock. Okay. It's a fragile situation. Okay, I'm ready. It can fall apart at, at any time. time. Mm. That's it. And none will no, be no. wiser. Oh, no. <laughs> Stop singing my stuff. All right, well, okay. It pulled me in. It sucked me in. All right, that was a good oh, song. I like that one. I like that one. That's my song. And so what y'all think now? Okay, y'all tell us. We're going to keep checking. And moving on, we've got some spotlight news for you today. Shout out to Natalia, too. She in there rocking it. She in there. Uh, hey, girl. I miss you. I miss Natalia. I miss my, my entire staff at Arnold and Porter. I miss y'all so, so very much. Yeah, shout out to Arnold and Porter, Seeing too. you on Zoom is just not the same. And so, yes, we're going to have a, a 
apartment turn up at the lake house before it gets cold. <laughs> apartment turn up, okay. Yeah, we are. What do you call it? A lake, a lake house. The lake turn house. Up? Yeah, we're gonna have a department. Oh, department. Turn up. My department. Yes. Okay, cool. Um, Spotlight News is sponsored by Umbrella Therapeutic Services. Umbrella Therapeutic and Shea Services. Like, Whoa. That's right. Shout out to the homeboy Wes. Yes. Hey, so, Wes. Don't see the Wes. No, he's been he's been doing quarantine traveling, so okay. he's getting to travel so. on. Umbrella Therapeutic Services is DC's most reliable and trusted behavioral health organization. They provide community support, medication management, and therapy for individuals and groups. Any DC resident, ages five and up eligible for their services, and they accept Medicaid, Medicare, and also private health insurances. You can reach Umbrella at 1-888-793-4357. Again, that number is 1-888-793-4357. Take your mental health seriously, guys. I mean, I am a, um, I'm the director of benefits at a large law firm, right? And so mental health benefits are, are super important in any benefits department, but yes, you got to take it seriously. Um, companies are doing more and more to support mental health, so make sure you take advantage of those things, guys. Very important. A lot of people are having uh, tough times dealing with the times. These are times that we have not seen. They are unprecedented. We know that. Yeah. Um, and so you have to keep a sound mind. So if you are feeling uh, a little stressed out or overwhelmed, a lot of people are. Don't think you're alone, but just make sure you get some help. So take it seriously. Don't let it go too far. Check into uh, Umbrella the Therapeutic Services. That's right. Uh, shea butter like whoa. I like to do that. Shea, That's the thing, right? Yeah, shea butter doing? like whoa. Okay. Yeah. They provide gentle and natural skincare products that are 100% non-toxic. That's what you need. You need That's that non-toxic non -toxic. Non -toxic. Non stuff all on your skin. Make it soft. They got sugar scrubs and uh, Natural shea butter, all kinds of an amazing products. They smell really good. And you should go online to www.sheabutterlikewo.com. And at the end of your order, put in S P O T 20 because you are Spotlight, spotlight 20. Family. Spot 20, baby. You're part of this family, right? So you Spotlight Family. Go to www.sheabutterlikewo.com. Put in Spot 20 as your discount code, and you get a discount off your entire order. That's right. Spot 20. See, there's advantages of being part of the Spotlight family, y'all. And shout out to the fam, so district, let me say it right. Well, we're going to talk about that in yeah, just okay. a second I because, yes, you okay. did, but it's okay, honey. All right, I got excited about it. I all had a great this, time. Yeah, good situation, right? I did not know. Um, our new intern, who's already a rock star, told me that August is Black-Owned Business Month. I did not know that. So this week... Every week we're going to talk about some black businesses. This week we're going to do three. We're going to do three week. And this week we're going to talk about three black owned businesses. And all three of them happen to be locally located here in the DMV doing some amazing things. And we want you all to understand the importance of supporting black owned businesses. Very right? important. Very important. Real Nutritious Food LLC is a new black owned and operated modern American cuisine restaurant located up on Connecticut Avenue in Northwest. So Follow them on Instagram, um, Real Nutritious Food, LLC, LLC, and support a new black-owned restaurant. And I heard the food is really healthy but good. And that's hard to get healthy and good because healthy stuff don't be tasting good. It so really does not. And that's we, have to go check. I haven't, we haven't gone to check it out, so I'm not speaking from personal experiences. I'm just speaking on what I've heard out there, word on the street. So when we go and check it out, I'll let you all know firsthand. Um, the tea bar is a new black female-owned and operated mobile bartending service yes, providing is. professional but fun bartending. Uh, you can uh, hire them, hire her for your corporate events, for your weddings, um, anything, because it's all professional services. It's fun. But now you can also get some drinks ordered and delivered to you. So you see those amazing drinks on the screen? And they you are can, amazing. Yes, they are amazing. You can follow the tea bar on Instagram and Facebook. If you order those drinks, you can um, get them delivered. There's a menu on the website, so make sure you go on Facebook or Instagram and check out the tea bar. I mentioned Spotlight, and you get 10% off. That's right. See that? Look at it. Benefits. Look benefits is benefits. Last but not least, another black-owned business, and it's the Union District or the Lounge. It's the only black-owned restaurant over at the Union Market area and over there in North it. DC, and it's fabulous, you all. We love Look, it. We, we went love on it. Sunday. We, mm -mm -mm. 
Mm, Y'all better stay tuned because we got some major collabs coming with the Union District Oyster Bar and Lounge, and we cannot wait to tell y'all. Man, we met some amazing people. I want to give a special shout out to Dr. Hugh Weathers. Aww, right? yay. That's one of the people, one of the good brothers that I met over there, and um, we're going to be doing some business, and a lot of things are good happening. So I just want right. to give a shout out. Shout, out, say, and, uh, shout, shout out, out to PJ to and his wife and his brother. I forgot his brother's yes, name. Yeah, shout out PJ and his brother. I'm sorry, I did forget your name, but it charged it to my head, not my heart. Not our heart. So we when do I, remember when you. I say we had a great time, and we you guys did. have an amazing situation, and we're looking forward to collabing and uh, doing something with Spotlight or the city. For in the sure. Game. Can't and wait. And so stay tuned. We got some big things going on. I'm like a little kid. I'm like, I can't wait to tell y'all. Yeah, man, we got some big stuff going on. And so uh, we've been blessed. God is good. Yes, Let's God is good all the time. I know that. All right, well, if you haven't heard, that means you don't have a TV or a radio and you haven't walked past no newspaper because you, Joe Biden has selected California Senator Kamala Harris to be his vice president running mate for the upcoming election, y'all. Yes, he did. She is the first black female to run for vice president of the United States, and she is a product of Howard University. H-U. H-U, you know. Yes. Local. So, Local um, bread. That's what's up. I'm very, very happy um, to hear that a, a black lady, black girl magic, right, um, by running for vice president. So kudos to you, Kamala Harris, and uh, good luck. Good situation. going to be situation. interesting. Uh, this whole it's going to be interesting. So I just got to have good my luck, popcorn girl. up. Good luck, girl. <laughs> hey, hey. Yes. Hey. All right. Hey, I'm uh, going to tell you what's going to be interesting. What? The debate between her and Pence. <laughs> <laughs> that will I'm looking be. forward to that part, right? I'm on, I'm all the way over there waiting on that debate because that's going to be a jaw job in the uh, debate. You watch and see. And a lot of you all have, um, you all have uh, asked us on on our Facebook. You know, why don't we talk a lot more about you know like uh, politics and voting? With Stan and I don't get a lot into that kind of that area because it's so yeah. controversial. Right, and so we like to just talk about God on our show, right, baby? And but, say but, that's God but, is the answer. Well, but the, yeah, that's how we rock. So right. we don't really care who becomes the president. No disrespect to the president, right? But at the end of the day, go out and vote and try to be a, make a difference. Make a difference for like, sure. You know, don't let it just be in your heart. Go out there and make a difference. Do and, something. And, and yeah, don't like Trey on say. Don't put Trey on white say. Don't just stand there. Do, do something. something. And so at the end of the day, we all collectively have to do that something. So if everybody did something. Then, then we did something. That's and right. So that's what we need to be working on. All right. Well, did you know this? That August the 10th marks the 150th day from when Breonna Taylor was murdered inside of her home and her cop killers remained free. Um, to honor Breonna, your girl Oprah paid for 26 billboards throughout Louisville, Kentucky, which is where Breonna lived, right? I think that's a big deal. So kudos to you, Oprah. We, not, we don't have nothing bad to say about you. We want to say that's did 26 billboards through Louisville, and that's not the only thing Oprah did. Oprah has never, in the 20 year history of publishing the O Magazine, the only person who's ever been on the cover of O Magazine has been Oprah herself. First time ever that she put someone else on the cover, and it's Breonna Taylor. So kudos to you, Oprah. I like to see that. Yeah, cool. Yeah, cool. I, I like it. Um, what I don't like though is um that you have to have billboards. What I don't like is you have to be on a magazine. What yeah. I don't like. Is racism is so heavy and deep rooted that you have to go so far and still get no justice. If you have to go this far to get somebody to be arrested, then God help you trying to get yeah. convictions. So now we got to start looking at things different, Absolutely. right? Absolutely, got to start looking at things different. Yeah. And I don't want to get into that because yeah. that's why I don't talk about politics. Yeah. <laughs> if you're not going to think right about it, don't talk don't about talk it. Don't talk about like, it. At the end of the day, I'm not traditional. With the politicians. Like, I never thought that we wasn't good enough to police ourselves. We can hire police to have a community and do a whole different thing. I don't believe that that system was ever set up for a black and brown community, period. Yeah. Because fear was brought into the community day one. They wasn't people from your community. They wasn't people that you could recognize. And so most of them were sent into your uh, neighborhood to just strictly uh, put order. No relationship building, no understanding of the community. And so it was built to fail from day one. And then the things that were put into those community, into those uh, police 
offices or these those, those people's minds, these officers' minds, wasn't trained for serve and protect. It's to come and break your neck. Yeah. And so that's not cool. And we have to learn to do something about it. We can't beg an oppressor to stop oppressing the oppressors. The oppressors can't go, you can't go to them and say, can you tell your lesser oppressor to don't oppress us? <laughs> it don't work like it's that. Not gonna, they're not going to do that. Right. And so you just have to have enough sense to know that that's not the way. Do, do your way. We got to okay. stop this, though. Okay. All right. Yeah, we definitely we good, stop. Mighty Mouse? We need to go to a commercial? We good? Okay. Yeah. Uh, so the WAP song is getting a lot of conversation. I, I can't say what it means. I can tell you that it, it stands for wet, A-S-S, -S, and then the P word. So put y'all put that together. W-A-P, the song by Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion. CeeLo Green called them out and said, look, this is a disgrace. They are making shameless and desperate songs and lyrics. And it's just, uh, uh, it's, uh, they not getting, I mean, they, it's like divided. They getting a lot of people that are like, this is not cool. What are you all doing yeah. in our ladies? And so. What the hell? What I'm trying to understand is if you already are successful, these two young ladies they are successful. They not wannabes. They're not trying to create success by hype. Right. Like, like uh, what's the young girl did? What's the girl? Uh. I can't even think of her name now. The one that had sex with Ray J. Oh, Kim Kardashian. Yeah, they didn't Kim Kardashian their way. Like, they really had some talent. Mm -hmm. right? And so, if you have talent, then you shouldn't have to be subject to doing things that belittle you or make you feel a way. And you should feel a way about that song if you're a real lady with children. I feel a one way about it. One of these young got children, got a child and the whole nine. So, I'm, I'm thinking, come on, come on. Think about what you're doing. I'm like, what the, on, who, think who about thought it. of that? Like, and who, who, which one of y'all said, yes, that's it right it's there? It's going to sell a lot of records, too, though. Really? It's going to sell a lot of records, too, though. I'm just, you know what? Y'all know me, and y'all know I don't hold back. And some, you know, I do have my ratchet moments, right? But at the end of the day, I'm still a lady. I'm a queen. And I have children. And my children, hopefully, will have some children. I'm going to have grandkids watching. I never want them to see Nothing like that. And I'm just, I'm a little disappointed. No, I'm a lot disappointed. Yeah. I am. And I, and, I, and I think that they should have thought this through a little bit more before. You can't do any, all money, not good money. You just got to know what to do. For, you know, you got to image the whole long term. Your kids going to see this and they're going to hear this and you're going to be, it's just too much. It's like you got to have enough respect for yourself at the end of the day. Yeah. And so a lot of young girls think that's cool because they don't have the balance. They don't have nobody at their house talking to them. Yeah. So they're going to go with this. And so they're going to portray some things that shouldn't be portrayed. It's not cool, all. though. Um, I got I to gotta move along. I'm going to go ahead on to Spotlight Sports, you all. Um, or let's, let's go to a commercial real quick. You d okay. Yeah. All right. We go to Let's a go to commercial. commercial. We'll, we'll be right back. Spotlight over the city. Okay. The last time I spoke to Brianna Taylor's mom, Tamika Palmer, she was having a particularly bad day dealing with the loss of her daughter. She told me, I can't stop seeing her face, her smile. It's what I miss most about her. I'm still waiting for her to come through the door. Everybody who's lost a loved one knows that feeling. For every mother and father whose child is out in the world right now, imagine getting a call in the middle of the night that your daughter has been shot in her apartment. And then you find out the people who killed her were police officers who should never have been there in the first place. What would you want to happen now? Would you be content to hear five months later there's an investigation and that no one has been held accountable for shooting your innocent daughter multiple times and letting her life blow. If not for the coronavirus, I'd be out in these streets marching with the Black Lives Matter protesters. These 26 billboards, one for every year of Brianna's life, are my offering, my form of protest. We cannot be silent. We have to use whatever megaphone we have to cry for justice.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Spotlight Over the City. We are back. Um, we, we waiting are on back. the plus we, one or do we have it? We not, not yet. We're not, not yet. waiting on the plus one yet. I'm going to give y'all a little bit of some sports update. And then we got the question of the week that we didn't get to. So we want to get to that because I know a lot of y'all are waiting. The and I'm going, get, week. I'm going to get your question out there if the you person that sent it to us. Uh, okay. And I promise no tears today, y'all. No tears. Um, Orange County, California declares August 24, 824 as Kobe Bryant Day, y'all. That's what's the numbers 824 were Kobe's jersey numbers throughout his NBA career. So that's pretty cool, right? I think so. Yeah, 824. August 24th is going to be Kobe Bryant Day. Wear your jerseys, y'all, on the 24th if you have one. Jerry Jones, hey, is now saying <laughs> that he will listen to his players. And he is reconsidering his stance on anthem kneeling. No more toe to the line. Toe to the line, he, Negro. Jerry got Put the your toe to the line. <laughs> toe to the line. Black line. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. He got wait. his Black Lives Matter memo. Jerry Jones got the memo minute. now. You mean to tell me that Jerry convinced? Yes. Jerry Jones convinced that he Black Lives Matter. Yes. He got Jerry the memo. Jones? Yes. Why are you trying toe to Toe to the line, Jerry Jones. Yes, him. Yes. He said, None of you Negroes better not kneel, Jerry Jones. <laughs> That's the same one? He said he had paid a change of heart. Change of heart. People have a... Look at it. Look, you see how God does? Like, look at 400 God. 400 years is change up. Change of heart. Look at it. Good, 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 good. That's right. Jerry so, Jones. We matter. What? We matter to Jerry now, Jones. Is it a change of heart or is it America looking at the heartbeat of America now and saying you got to line up? Is it that? It might or be. Or did he change his heart? I'm just letting you know. No more toe to the line? No more toe to the line. They can kneel. And the... Uh, <laughs> Big Ten and Pac-12 <laughs> have canceled the 2020 season, and they're saying, well, I do, I do, but I don't. He, he's a Cowboys hater. You know, the nerd team is Cowboys, and he's a Cowboys hater, and it's okay. Tell to I the love line. him anyway. Tell to the line. That's what he told. Um, yes, but, baby, the Big Ten and Pac-12, I, I don't know if you're into college football, but they canceled their 2020 season, and they're saying yeah. what they'll probably do is have two college football seasons in the spring and fall of 2021 so Let's we'll get see it'll be a whole wild situation period we'll see we're um, gonna see why don't they make all the sports teams play in a bubble they said it works i don't right. know can you play football in a bubble you i, I don't know um, but I don't if know. they don't have nfl all winter i'm gonna just be like oh i'm cool man. i'm gonna catch up on my movies though i got um, things to do are you ready for the question of the week yes rock all right. Well, last week we talked about this a little bit, and someone wanted us to follow up. So last week's show, y'all, we, they said, this is the question. Last week's show, y'all spoke about how to keep things hot and spicy at home during this pandemic. Well, what if you have a spouse who is adamantly unwilling to try anything outside of the basics, and you don't want to cheat, and you don't want to displease God? What do you do? That's the question to me and you. Now, Okay, break they're it saying, one more time. The, on. Their question is, what if you have a spouse who is adamantly unwilling to try anything outside of the basics military position, and you don't want to cheat on your spouse, and you don't want to displease God? You want to stay with this person. You love this person. But during, I mean, you're getting to a point where you're like, this person refuses to do X, Y, Z, and that's what I really want. I told you that. I said, you don't, won't let me choke you. You won't let me spank you. <laughs> so... What am I supposed to do <laughs> if that's what I desire? So you desire to choke and spank me? Yes, I want to see if that like, turns me on. I want to try it. Means it don't work for me. So but you gotta, don't know if you don't let you me gotta try have it. A happy medium, like you got to. So uh, again, so I have a spouse who won't let. I mean, that's a silly but example. I, but, but I'm if not you, adamantly against, you know, other other situations things. and stuff. Right, this, but this person is. Let's, let's get it. This person. That's they didn't say on. what their thing is. They just said that they feel like you know to keep it hot and spicy. You're supposed to be able to do some other things outside of the norm and whatever that is. He won't lick it. I don't know. They didn't so, say so, what it is. So now let me ask you this. Ask her, did they have this problem prior to being married? Yes. They did? Yes. Hmm. So then why do you think marriage would change? A lot of people think that. And a lot of people, like a lot of people say, well, you know, I don't do that. And then you marry them anyway. And you expect them to do it once they become okay, your spouse. So here's what you can do. To turn to, okay, so have you tried any extra freak level stuff to try to switch his mind over to that? Because you got to try to lead him over there, like get you some toys or, or uh, you know, start busting a move in front of him or something. I think Just try to sway his mind. I think that he's that. already gone through all of that. I think that it comes down to you have couples out here who feel one person might you know what I really want to I want us to watch porn or I want to use sex toys or I want another third person or I want 
whatever it is, and you have a, the other spouse is like, oh, no, I don't do that. I ain't never did it, and I ain't going to do it, period. Yeah. I what mean, are you doing? You don't want to cheat. You should have dealt with that uh, prior to being married. because you no, know, I, I agree with you. You have to have certain things that's going to satisfy you uh, knowingly uh, during the dating process. If you get over there thinking that she or he going to get freaky after y'all get married, you sadly mistaken. You right, have to right. Subject yourself to that early, or just be satisfied with the freak level you got. But what you if you married? go along in marriage? Like for example, with us, what if we go along and we're married for like you know 12, 15 years? So we do a lot of freaky things, but then after the 12 years, like okay, let's do something else. Let's do this, and you be like, no, nah, I ain't, I ain't into that. Do I yeah, just want to let it go? I don't know. That's tough because, like I said, is he not? She's not saying that. She's saying that. She's not being compensated in no extra capacity at all. It's just traditional basic. That's different. Traditional. Like, she's not, he's not trying to step outside of the box and do anything. And so I don't. It's really... actually vice versa. I, I'll oh, just go ahead and say it. It's, uh, 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 the woman is saying, I didn't suck it before we got married and I don't want to suck it now. I'm never going to do that. Oh, yeah. That's the problem. <laughs> that, that shit got serious. Just now. I Try not to cuss. That's some shit. That listen, lady. Let no. me say something. Let me just say this, lady. Where's she at? What? I don't know. These okay. are viewers and listeners who Let, are... listen, viewer. I'm gonna tell you something right now. But he don't want to cheat, and he don't want to. He be, on his way. He don't want to be displeasing to God. He, he don't right want to cheat on his corner. wife. He love right her. The corner. If you a deacon, uh, 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 what is she at, at the church? I don't. If you a first lady, third lady, whatever kind of lady you are at that church. You better suck it, bend it, twist it, and rub it, stroke it, grab his testicles. You better Baby. do all, okay. all of that. Sam goes on if the you do East. not what? do that, lady, he's going to get someone to compensate him because he's still going to lick, suck, and rub bae. it. That's what he's going to Bae, bae, bae. You going off the deep end now. No. Listen. Yes, he people, don't want we, we understand. Yes, we I'm get trying it. to put it plain to the public. Because right. You trying a lot to of a lot of people believe that they don't need to have a freak level because they're married. You have to have a freak level because you're married. Because it's a lot of unmarried people that's freaky. <laughs> <laughs> and so, hey, listen, you I gotta agree. get your damn freak up. Get lift your skirts a little higher. Bend over, bust it over in the kitchen. All of that. Cook with thongs on. Boy shorts. Uh, uh, poom poom slippers. Uh huh. With fur on them. Uh huh. And lace drawers. And then you gonna let, and then you gonna let me choke you? Do all of that. <laughs> she tried to throw that in there. She tried to throw it in there. You seen Listen, the mic, mic, mic. as a wife, I don't disagree. I tell all my girlfriends or anybody who comes to be me, a freak. If you don't do it, whatever that it is, rub it in. And y'all are married, and that's your. Take when, your shoes off in the restaurant and put your leg feet in between his legs. When is you your, gotta do these things wait a minute. if you want a marriage or a boyfriend to stay with we, you? We're only talking about people that are like, no, you're married, right? You better so bust listen, it down. I'm telling you listen, right now. Don't play yes, the games. Yes, yes, yes. All of the, everything that you're saying is absolutely true. And if you're married, you you got to bust it down. You got to do all you of that. You got to bust it down. If you're not married and you want to be married, don't do it to get married. Do it to stay married. No, just wait if you married do to it, do it. How about that? Nobody listening to that. <laughs> if you be asking it, okay, yeah, that's right. Put, yes. the, put the chastity belt on. That's right. Lock but, that box down but, until you get married. But Because it, 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 yes. Lock it down. I should have made you wait. Keep the box locked. And so we, I, I waited six you. months. You waited almost seven months. Yeah. yeah. I waited. So, so basically, he did. lock the box if you're not, you know, serious about the person. Or if you just, you're grown up. But if you get to be with somebody, you got to really be serious about the sex. You got to really know that people take it seriously. Don't just do it to get them. Because a lot of people, they be freaky as hell. And then once they say, okay, I got them now, I'm cool. And then they back off the freak. You can't. I go off the freak. You got to step it up. You got to get on the gas. Mm. Start doing extra stuff. Mm. Sometimes you got a house. Go get a hotel with a jacuzzi and call them over there. Mm. Be naked when you get there. Okay. Have a, 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 a jacket or something or some kind of something and then whoop and don't have nothing. Do Ooh. that kind of stuff. Uh -huh. Have some candles. Do all of that yeah. periodically yeah. and keep that the juices going. Yeah, all right. Y'all yeah. heard it, right? And if you can sing, just sing because I got the voice. I just sing her. 
And she just throw her pants everywhere. That's how I get her. You telling the truth. Yeah, that's what I, how I got you. <laughs> I sung, and I sent you a video from Atlanta, and then you came down there. <laughs> okay. Real, true story. Listen, um, we got an amazing... <laughs> listen. You ain't want me we, to tell her. <laughs> we do. We do I need... I told her, Hugh. I told her business, Hugh. <laughs> listen, y'all. <laughs> we that? did. I mean, pretty much everything you did got me, baby. So that's the truth. Oh, yeah? The singing, the voice. Everything. It made you moist. Yeah, everything. Yeah, I told y'all. Um, we have an amazing guest coming up. We have the lovely uh, Tamika Newhouse coming up, and I cannot wait to catch up with her. So let's go to a quick commercial break. Oh, wait, before we go, let okay, me tell some people. Let's do that. I got okay. a lot of people on here. I got Natalia. Shout out Natalia. Sean Jackson. What's happening? Uh, John, John Jackson. Nisi Nisi. What's up, babe? Uh, Victor. I see you, Victor. Lakeisha. What's up, Keisha? K.S. Lewis. Thank you for coming to board. Oh, man, it's a bunch. Everybody, thank you, all of you guys on Facebook. Everybody. Thank you guys. Lena? Everybody. That right? I like Lena. Lena? Everybody. Lena, too. Love you. Thank you guys for tuning in to uh, Spotlight Over the City. We'll be right back after this commercial. She'll smell good. Put this on. She gonna love a buffer. <laughs> it's gonna be nice. Stick right here and put a dab on the elbow. The potatoes nice and shiny.
In 1990, Washington, D.C. saw more than 470 homicides, earning it the label murder capital of the U.S. Right there. Hey, listen, when y'all pull over to the side, I'm gonna go in here and rush this dude. When y'all see me rushing, y'all rush in about 30 seconds. Give me 30 seconds and rush the door. Ain't no way hit him. Too low with you, man. How you feel? Too low with you, man. Hey, man, I got you about this meeting, nigga. Oh, yeah, all right, all right. I don't know yet. I see it. We're gonna talk to the other day, man. Say, uh -huh. I got funny feelings. Dude, I'm feeling so, you already know what it is. Wait for Black to get in there. Give us the signal. Run up in the joint. Snatch this nigga up. Break. Get this nigga this money, man. I'll be taking you to some money. Just let me right, up. Your ass up. Come on. Get me up. Let's man. go. Just get me up. Let's go. Get me up. Let's go. Let's go. Over the city, and man, 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 we got some more guests. We actually was trying to wait it out a little bit longer. Yeah, we're waiting for while, Tamika. Uh, next guest, Tamika, but we may can't make it. She got happens. some things going on down there in Atlanta, yes, so she um, does. we're hoping that we can at least get her for a couple minutes. But if not, we got y'all got me a saying, and then we hey. got actor Mark McKinnon coming up on the seventh fit in, in a few minutes. So, uh, we're gonna keep things moving, but yeah, before we went to a commercial break, I had to cut things short, but you know, we can get back to it. I didn't have you seen something. Comments about our uh, question of the question of the week. I have, and what they say. Let me see. Let's, Let's see go to coming. some of the comments. Shout out to Chris Hall too. My man just joined on uh, live. What y'all What y'all say about that? What Is do you Shanita do? Or Shanetta? I don't want to say it wrong. Miss Boone. I say Shanita. Shanita, thanks for joining. I want to know, you know, realistically, you know, you know, my husband, he did go off the deep end, but that can be. <laughs> what that, about the sex? It can be a serious issue because you know you might have. Uh, you might really have a situation. It could be the man or the woman. And, and you know, I told Stan when before we got married. What did I? And see, I'm very upfront. He thinks I'm, I'm, I'm tricking him. I didn't. I said, I don't ride it no more. That was in my teens and early 20s. I mean, you know, stuff, you know, like. That's up. And right then away. I said, no animals. No right. animals. We're going to look for animals. Right. So, yeah, I, I gave him two things. And I was like, you're my husband. Well, once you become my husband, whatever. It's like, whatever. You, you want to do he tried to challenge me one time was like okay we out in the open park somewhere in the Roanoke Rapids somewhere and I said what okay didn't I yeah you did <laughs> and so and so 
Whatever. <laughs> I'm with it. And, and, and so, but this is how she tricked me. How? She said, yeah, I got a high sex drive. I was like, yeah, that's good. I, need, I did. I, need the one I with said high that. Sex drive. But that's how I'm rocking, so that's cool, you know. But so. we had two different definitions <laughs> of what high means, so, okay? So, needless to say, her sex drive wasn't high. <laughs> that was a lie. My sex drive remained the same. And so, boom, that's how I rock. So, I thought it was a trick because I thought she was serious. Okay, listen, y'all. Listen. It wasn't real. My tea hive. Where you at? <laughs> so, what is, so I ladies, told him, I said, I have a high sex drive. And I said, for me, for a woman, at this time, I'm in my late 40s. So, a woman in her 40s, um, a high sex drive is twice a week for that's me. That's not high worth a damn. That is that's high. That's mediocre That's sex not drive. mediocre. High How many of y'all? High sex. High. When you high, that's high as you can go to you go down. You know you can't go back up there. Listen, high, high sex drive is three, four times, maybe five a week. At least four a no. week. That's high. That's high for two four, people five who times. ain't got shit it's else to do in days. life. It's seven ain't... days in a week. If you only going four to five, that's high. No, it's that's, not. Yes, it is. So if you mediocre or medium, then you two, three. Right? Let me tell you something. If you low, you one. Or none. So you saying you saying uh, low sex drive is once a week? Low sex drive is once a week. Yes. So what is it for people who only have sex once every other week? What is that called? Damn near non-existent sex drive. That's mercy sex. Once every other week? Mercy sex. That's what that is. That's called mercy sex. So high is five to seven that times a week. That means I'm only giving you sex because I don't. I'm not really feeling it, but I, I know it's been two weeks. Like Wait a minute, Shanita, what the hell? She said two <laughs> times a day is high. What? Yes, with Shanita. <laughs> get my goddamn back. What? Shanita? <laughs> listen. Yes, Shanita. I ain't, listen. Listen, I'm not this, gonna... I said this last week. I said, listen, high mean three, three times mediocre, like busting it down, maybe sneak one or two more times in quickly on a week. That's high. And now if you once or twice a day, now you really meet my sex drive. Listen. Now we popping now. Once a day, we is you just got to do hot things to make it make it lit every time. Like, you know, it's wall play, it's full play, it's in the bed, it's in the car, it's at the restaurant, sneak in the bathroom. Just get right. out. Lean up. Lean up. Lena on, Lena on here said, y'all tripping. Two times a day is dehydration. Let me tell y'all. <laughs> baby, let me let me <laughs> have a, that, let me have a just a minute, yes. Let me tell y'all something. I did say hi, but here's the thing. Yours was here's the not thing. High. Two to three. Uh, we, when, when Stan and I were first dating, it, it was high because I'm uh, I'm going to go visit him. That's we how were you me. We were long distance. Long distance. You was busting and down. I'm going to go see him. So I carve out four days a month of and, my and life. You wanted to and have all three like, times a day. All I days. did, and we hey. did it like eight three, times. And one time we did six it like eight times, six times one in one day. day. That's you not realistic for so everyday life. Once a week, and you think that that's high? You don't go. That's a lie. But it, was, on, but it was only that way because those were the four days I had carved out of the month. Well, if I you want to go for them out, I tell mine you what. Stay carved out. Okay. Like I, I on, on, on live mine's TV, still carving. here's what I will say. Out. Okay. And to you, my husband, since you say that, I want you to see the difference. What I'll do is I'll carve out four days in a row a month here. So four days. Like you used to do, yeah. That's what you used to get, and oh, that's what days, you. Okay. That was hot sex, right? Okay, four days a month. Four, four days, days a month. A month. That's I'ma hump you so oh, much. Oh, four days straight. Four days straight. Okay. Like a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We can right. start this that this tomorrow. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. But that's it until the next month, cause that's going to be the hotness. That's going to be me giving it to you every day, like three to four times a day. That's what we used to have. You so said, if you want to go back to you what said we, that's it for the you month. said that's what. Yes, the if, month? that's what you used to get. You saw me once a month and for like four days, and we used to go like crazy. What the hell is that? Somebody come get his computer. <laughs> so, <laughs> computer out here talking trash. So, so, that's, so that's the difference. But now when we're here, everyday life, that's non-realistic. When we were dating long distance, four times a month, I'm going to bust it down every day. I don't need no it's food. It's okay, babe. I don't I, need listen, no water. I'm the we didn't OG. leave the red room. OG. That's how I rock. I, I rock a little different. Like, What's I'm wrong? Young OG. Okay. Oh. So we got Mark McKinnon coming up, y'all. We're going okay. to so take anyway, it. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> we got to get back to this because, listen, I'm telling y'all sisters, man, all this, I don't suck it, I don't rub it, all this fake. Fake. I didn't say none you of that. I said I don't me. ride it. Well, you better listen. But I do everything else. <laughs> listen, you man. You can put me on the wall.
better stop playing you can, games, man. You can you put me on ride. top of the car. You better be You can put me on the bushes. Uh, you can put me song? out up on top of the deck. You can do whatever you want. Anything, anything, no animals. And I just I, I just don't do the so bouncing anyway, up. I don't do all that. When you, so, when yeah, you with are. somebody, don't be telling them what you're going to do. You better discover new, tra new tra trails. Okay, Lays new trails. That's so, right. Shanita said, get them, Terry. <laughs> Shanita the one just told you that you got to bust it but down. But she huh? didn't understand the dynamics of what it was. To now, she was just saying, you know, Sunita, to, be that advocate for twice a day as a high sex. Twice guy. a day, if and I agree with what you said. Twice a day, I'm twice a day for four days a month. Twice a day, and one of them could be a quickie, then the other one, it might be a late night buzz down. Yes, Rick, Lena, I will give it to him in the bushes, and he know I will. He know it. He <laughs> tested me. He won't say no, sir. It's kids in the park. <laughs> <laughs> Did you not? <laughs> Terry, they was having a damn field trip. I you didn't trying care. to have sex. I didn't care. She gonna get naked at the field trip. I didn't get it's naked. A field trip. I didn't get naked. I wore a skirt on well, purpose. You, you can't bust it down while the kids are right. Those kids. They were like 10 Terry, feet away. Terry's right there. They were social distance. <laughs> okay. So I can't take this. Listen. Get the get the people. Get the people. Okay. Get, we got we company. got we got, we got Mark. company, Terry. Okay, we got Mark McKay. Coming so, up, uh, y'all. <laughs> do you? Hey, do we need to go to a commercial? Or we good? Yeah, we'll now be right. we'll go to a commercial break, y'all. We'll right, man. We're going to a commercial. We'll be right back. Spotlight over city. Uh, uh, you showing off? Talk about. Uh,
Welcome back to Spotlight Over the City. Guess what, y'all? We got us a plus one in the building. Well, yes, not we do. Quite yes, in we the do. Building, but technically, yeah, in the building. Yes, we and do. So I'm gonna let Wifey introduce. Yes, we do. We have a plus one in the building, an amazing talent straight from the DMV. I don't know the DMV. We got some good, good, good. We lit. We lit in the Super DMV. Lit. If you don't I think know, the best area to live in. Or I, be do from, to I do from, too. I do too. We got think. some amazing talent in the DMV. So coming up, we've got Mark McKinnon. Y'all, give it up. Give it up. Woo! Man, great. Great to have you on. We are doing great. Thank there you. We go. Now we see you. Yeah, we can see you good now. You hear us all good? Yeah. Can you hear us good? Yeah, I can hear you. Perfect. Perfect. Welcome to Spotlight Over the City, Mark. Thank you for joining our show, being a part of our Spotlight family. No, thank you. I'm really excited to be on your show. You guys are just amazing and funny. Like, I'm listening to everything you're saying. <laughs> okay, with my wife, like, laughing at what you're talking about. It's a good question over there. Did, did you tell her that she got to make sure she get it right and tight every time? She want to keep you around. She got to keep it down. Yeah, she got to keep it high. She got to keep it high. <laughs> hey, so uh, get right to it, man. Let them know just exactly who they dealing with. Here. Who is Mark McKinney? Who is Mark McKinney? Who is Mark McKinney? Mark McKinney is an actor. He's an acting coach, husband, a minister. A guy that all around just loves helping people. Like, I just have a heart for helping people, man. And really enjoy everything that I'm doing, and I'm honored to say I'm doing what I love, you know, and it's blessed to be in that position to do what you love and have the time and the energy to do it, you know, so I'm, I'm excited, man. It's a definite blessing to be doing what you love, because that means it's not really work, right? No, absolutely. No, yeah. Right. So you do a lot of things. Go ahead, wait. Have you always known that you wanted to act? Like, how did this all come about? Have you always known? Not at all. My, my focus early in growing up was being an athlete, you know, growing up, trying to make it to the uh, pros. Um, but what happened was in high school, I ended up accidentally sitting in on an audition with supporting a friend. And they were like, hey, we need uh, more male presence in the play. This is out of Wardorf. And at that time, my school was predominantly white, you know, but they had a couple of uh, people of color there. And what happened was, yeah, it was like, Mark, we need you to audition. I said, wait. Well, I don't want to really do this. I said, please do it. Please do it. I'll finish it. End up getting the lead role. But that's not why I fell in love with it. I fell in love with it because that following year, so many African Americans and so many athletes also started auditioning for the shows, auditioning for the plays, to the point where the principal gave me a social change award. And when I saw that change come, I said, wow, just by me doing this show, just by me acting, I was able to change lives in a sense, you know? So. Um, that's what made me really want to go into it and end up going to Howard University to study um, and really get serious from there. It's you. Wow. Hey, so, you know, yeah. Yes. Lately, as you know. Yeah. You that's know. Right. That's right. <laughs> what was your first big acting gig? Like, when did you, when was your first, the first time you got that, landed that job and you were like, yes. What was that? That first one for me was Blue Bloods um, on CBS. That was a big role for me because that was my first network TV job um, that was recurring, still is recurring. You know, they bring me back every year. Um, but that was that first time being able to be on a major set with some really big players on there. And um, it was just good to learn on that level, to be around those directors and those actors and just seeing, you know, how they do this on an everyday level, you know, on a high level that you have big budget production like that. I mean, it's a well oiled machine. Like, everybody loves what they're doing from the grip to the actor to the person carrying your water. Everyone just loves what you're doing. So it was great to experience that. Especially when you go to school, you study, you dream of it. So to go from the dream to actually living it, it just, it was a surreal moment. Wow, that is surreal. I'm just that's like, wow, up. that's what's up, right? So, so tell me something. What was one of the biggest people that you would say influenced you in your acting career? Like, what was that one person that you was like, I'm going to model myself after, or, eat, or I admire that person? Oh, man, that's a good question. The first for me was Idris Elba. Um, I loved his work early on, even when he did Daddy's Little Girl. He was in The Wire as well. But when I saw his work in Daddy's Little Girl, that's what really made me want to take that more serious. Maybe uh, want to go after that style of work as well. Um, but it was more so a TV show. Because I grew up playing football, um, especially high school football, I fell in love with a show called Friday Night Lights. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Out. I know Michael B. Jordan was there, a couple other people on there. But when I saw that show, I said, how dope would it be to have the best of both worlds? To do what you love, it, which is football, but also do acting to love as well and doing that at the same time. So that still is a goal. I still is a dream of mine to play a 
uh, athletes, play a professional athlete, a high school, athlete, college athlete, doesn't matter. I love them both. I still do them both. Um, and just would just love to do that on a high level. That's what's up. You mentioned having a school or being an instructor in the game. Ah. Sure, yeah. So, Let's McKinnon talk about that. Studio, yes. What's the name um, of it? McKinnon Acting Studio. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I go to Maryland where we just a point camera acting studio. We help actors position themselves to be in the best position to gain acting jobs and also representation. I mean, right from Highestville, we have people now who have agents and managers in New York and Atlanta and LA. They've been guest stars. Uh, we just celebrated earlier this year our first person to get a series regular role so that we wow. to LA. And guess what? They're taking that right here in Pigeon County. They're not living in LA. They're not living in New York. They're right here in Maryland. And doors are opening up. We got a few people who have national commercial events. It's just been a blessing to be the hub, to be the premier acting studio to really help people's dreams come true. Because what happened is we know we want to be actors. We know we want to get to that next level, but we don't know how. My studio is based on giving career advice and consultation along with the technique as well to really make sure you know how to get to that next level. And people are shocked, man, because we have people who just got into the game a year or two ago and they're already on national TV, already on movies, also just our philosophy and what we believe works. Wow. Hey, I wow. think it's a blessed Isn't that situation. So good? I'm so glad that you're doing it. I'm glad that you mentioned it. I want to make sure that I get the information to give out uh, to where they can uh, link it with you. Um, and check you out, but it's right at home. Base. That's big because yes. there's a lot of talent here in this area. Yeah, oh, right. a whole lot of talent. A whole lot of talent. So thank you for being the vessel and Absolutely. letting us have a platform. I'm gonna make sure we can feed the platform from one to another. Yes, indeed. We want people yeah. to know about this acting school. Um, so, so uh, Mark, Blue Bloods isn't the only network television show you have appeared on, right? I no, know no, what no. they are, but I'll let you tell it. Oh, yes. I saw also was blessed with the opportunity to be on Gotham. That was back in 2016. Mm -hmm. um, that was really, really fun to be on because I was a big Batman fan in general. So to be on a TV show that represents the Batman yeah. uh, franchise, you know, was really, really a fun thing. I also just started getting into movies. Uh, two years ago, I started to really focus my career from television and getting uh, in acting as well. Um, last year's spring, I did a little white uh, by Tom Hill, Tressa Smallwood. Shout out to them. Um, really, really great job where they filmed that right in the DMV area as well. Um, and then this past July, I just finished another movie. It was a BT Her film called Like, Comment, Subscribe. It was starring Jasmine Love, and I played her fiance in the movie. It's a beautiful love story. It just shows our journey about overcoming cancer and how love can help you through the trying times. So I had a really, really good time just playing that. So this guy has really been opening a lot of doors. And most recently, uh, three weeks ago, I got selected as one of the top 16 actors in New York by ABC. Um, oh. and so now they're literally doing a lot of things behind the scenes with my career, which I'm really excited about. Um, so yeah, it's just been a really good year despite COVID, despite this pandemic. So many great things have been happening, not just for myself, but the Kennedy Acting Studio family. I'm still winning out here, you know, it's just it's a blessing. Yes, indeed. Oh, hey, my you know, God. You know what I'm noticing, Mark, about what you made the statement on? Thank you for acknowledging God, right? I love that. But what I'm noticing is that a lot of people who are connected to God are blessed in this time. To the world. Right? To a, to a, I'm more blessed in this time than I was prior to, right? Wow. And wow. so a lot of people in my circle can say the same thing. But it's all based on a God connection, yep. right? It's based on us being rooted in God. Yep. Right? And I'm saying a lot of people have the same situation. So it depends on what side of the fence you're on and, and where you end up. And in this time, I think we want to line up. So I thank you for being lined up. And I oh, thank you for acknowledging that. Now more than ever is that time, you know, to this very time, you know, people losing jobs, family members are dying, having so much going on. It's, just, it's easy to fall into depression or get yeah. scared. You know, this is that time where sometimes you have no other choice but to be God. Yeah. Something I had to do when the COVID first hit, it, it hit my business hard. It hit us really, really hard. Right. You know, I had to lean on God and trust God. And he not only got me back on my feet, but he exceeded what we were doing before COVID. You know, so it's just trusting God and just understanding that everything works out for you good. Hey, no matter hey. what, no matter what it looks like, what it smells like, what it is, just know that God is working out for you. 
Uh, yes, indeed. Now, you know, um, the available wife, I smiled when you talked about that film, film because one, Tressa and I are, are she's a boo. That's and two, yeah, Tressa's fam. fam. And two, Stan and I had an opportunity to be on set and we want to be able to see a little cameo appearance, appearance of your spotlight over the city family in there. So, yeah, we actually in that movie. Congratulations, well. okay. Yeah, we did a little cameo. We did a little cameo yeah, in there. Like cameo, yeah. yeah. We'll see how little it is. We'll see how little it is. Yeah, it's little, it's little something, something. A little something, something. So I can't wait. I'm excited. I'm and, and those are, that's a great team to be a part of. I know if you've been a part of big productions, but for it to be a home team, Tressa and that whole gang, that whole uh, mechanized media production over there, they are a good team. We love them. Yeah, they're great team because, you know, they actually hired me to cast two of their BD films that they were doing um, this summer. You know, I got to see the behind the scenes of how they operate as a team. You yeah. know, a lot of times as an actor, we only see, okay, we're on set, everything is done. But to see from day one pre-production to bringing on the actors, the fact that they've been trusting me to do something on a high level like that, I mean, I'm truly grateful to trust them and trust me with that job. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they really, really have a heart for putting actors on the mat and, and giving them a chance to work with other notarized actors, you know. So they, they're doing some amazing things and they're about to go into production again, I think, next week for their Christmas movie. So it's just, they're doing so much. When one film is done, you think they're about to take a break? No, they're doing it. No. Act. Yeah. That's the thing. I tell trust you make me tired looking at you. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. So anything else coming up for you? I mean, is what, um, what's, what's next for Mark McKinnon? What's, what can we look forward to next? There's two things coming up. As we talk about the Bellable Wire, that's going to be at the American Black Film Festival at the end of this month. Uh, that will be seen on AmericanBlackFilmFestival.com. And also on October 17th, you can check out BBC Her. The movie Like, Comment, and Describe, which was directed by Cheryl Lee Ralph. Yeah. Um, okay. role for me, I'm really excited about. Uh, that's going to be airing on BET Her. That's what's next for me. And right after that, some things that I'm doing with ABC that's going to happen around November. I can't talk much about that yet, but I mean, just know that some amazing things are coming out of that. And, and know that you're going to have to come back on the show when you can talk about it. you got to come back and tell us. I appreciate it. I appreciate That's it. right. And so, uh, before you go, what piece of advice uh, would you give that up and coming actor or actress that uh, need to find some direction and which way to go? Right. Uh, I always like to tell people do not be afraid to be you. A lot of times we think we have to become something or transform into a character to please the casting director or to please the director. Believe it or not, they're looking for a you. Everyone is different, everyone brings a different brand and a promise to their roles. And so whenever you're preparing your characters, always try to find out how can I be myself in this role. And then you also got to market yourself. We got to know the type of personality you have, the type of energy you have. Because if we don't know that, how do we know where to put you in our film? How do we know what types of projects work for you? So that's what I'm always trying to encourage my clients that you need to know from your headshot, to your reel, to the types of scenes that you're doing in class, exactly what you get in the industry. You tell the industry who you are. Don't let the industry tell you. That's right. Perfect. I love That's that. Perfect. That's perfect. I love advice. that. So please give out your information. Um, how can people support you, follow you, give out all your information before you let you go, Mark? Oh, absolutely. I'm on Instagram at the Mark McKinnon. Um, also, the acting studio is at McKinnon Acting Studio. Uh, you can check out our website, McKinnonActingStudio.com. You can find out all our classes, at Google classes, private coaching. We also offer audition tapes. Open back up again soon. Uh, yeah, that's literally, you can find everything at the Okay. Perfect. perfect. Well, thank thank you, you for being a part of us, man. We, yes. And, um, thank you for inviting me. A true blessing. Thank you. Everybody. Yeah, we're honored as well. And um, may God bless everything that you touch, man. We know you'll be blessed. So just keep us in the loop. Yes. And we are your Spotlight family. So you're stuck with us. Anytime the platform can help you along the way, the answer is yes. Yeah, we gang gang now, man. You stuck with us. I'm holding to it. Yeah, we gang gang now. So the bigger you get, make sure you take us with you. So. Right, we're gonna be right there. All right, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Tell, tell the tell wife, wife hello. Keep it high. Tell wife, I said, keep it high. <laughs> keep it high <laughs> yes, right. thank you so yeah, much. Good, man. Y'all put up one, one more time, time for again <laughs> being made of Mark McKinnon. Woo! Yes, yes. All right, man, moving great, along. Right? That was great. Yeah, I love great it. Guess. I love it. Great, great energy. Great, great energy, spirit. Yeah, great thank spirit. You. We appreciate them. And I love it when they write from the DMV. Beat it, right? That's right. Um, we got a great family.
But we have a wonderful Spotlight family. Speaking of family, um, Yana has never been on the show, but she's family to me because we both were in the same play together last summer. And that's yeah, when we made your acting debut. I made my play, my acting debut last summer, and Yana starred in the play as well. So I got to see behind the scenes that she can sing in the shower, in the dressing room, in the parking lot, anywhere. This girl is amazing, bang, bang, amazing, bang, amazing. Bang. So coming up after this next commercial break, we got our girl again from the DMV, Yana Crawley. Yep, yep. We'll be right back. Spotlight over the city. She smell good. I'm gonna put this on. She gonna love bro. <laughs> yeah. oh, that's gonna be nice. Stitch right here, put a little tap on the air. saw more than 470 homicides, earning it the label murder capital of the U.S. Thank you. 
It's not really good, Joe. Get this nigga this money, man. And he's gonna kill you. I don't got I'm gonna take this money. Just let me out. Get your ass up, man. Get me out, man. Get me out. I'm gonna take you some money. Welcome back to Spotlight, and we have us a plus one in the building, not just the plus one, she's amazing, she's a songstress, she's soulful, she's uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let I'm gonna let her show you what she <laughs> does in a few minutes. Wife, you introduce our soulstress Woo! to the I gotta give her Coming to the stage, this, this young lady turned plays Wait a minute, she's an author too out. now. She's a, wait, wait. wait, she's an author too author, now. You ain't actress, singer, songstress. <laughs> Probably writer, oh, producer, everything. <laughs> the one and only Yana. Yana Pauly, y'all. Welcome to the party. Welcome well, to the party. Thank you for having me at the party. You know, I love the party. And the party started and the party finishes it. Yes, and you are. And the right person. <laughs> the building. Yana yes. is in the building. I have been trying to get Yana on the show probably for about maybe six to eight months now. We finally made it work. You worked the way though. You look amazing. Yes, girl. Thank yes. You. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you for joining the show. Thank you for being a part of our spotlight family, Yana. And thank you for being just the amazing woman that you've been. Um, everyone knows if you don't know, Yana is from the DMV and she has blossomed and been all over the place, right? And um, Yana, I think you're you started way back in the day with Listen Band. Is that right? Let's go, let's take it back. Let's take it back. So I first started singing. I grew up in um, Washington, D.C., Southeast bred, you know, Southeast born. Hey. Um, south I started singing south at south. First Baptist Church of Marshall Heights, right on the hill um, in Southeast. And then um, as time progressed, I just started singing um, in a lot of choruses and choirs. I would always do theater. Um, I remember doing stuff for UDC and my summer jobs and I will always pick music and arts and then um, a go-go is in my blood so you know go-go is our native music it's the thing it's, it's it nothing is. like it and so um, a bunch of uh, kids from Eastern High School me and my brothers, I was the first female to listen. They put a band together, and um, I used to go to Tacoma Station. I used to sing with them every so often, and they was like, yo, won't you just join the band? And so after <laughs> I joined the band, it was over. We kind of reigned for like seven years in the city, and it yes. was a great time, a good time. I was able to quit my job and just do that and pursue my singing career and all that good stuff. So it's been uphill ever since, you know, and I just, I just thank my brothers for asking me because it helped me with my performance now, you know, now that I'm performing, it, I think that groomed me for now. So I'm just grateful for my teachings with and, and all the culture that I got from D.C. because I'm in Georgia now, but don't y'all kick me out. I'm still, I'm still a white Oh, yeah, no, nah, you're the home team. You're the home team. You can so, never get yes. kicked out. So we can tell that the quarantine is serving you well. So let's talk about some of these projects and um, let them know what you have going on because I know you got a lot. Well, well, be, before we get to that, though, I mean, there's uh -huh. one missing piece the puzzle from way back, and that is the second season of BET Sunday. Best. Do y'all know who the winner was? Wait a minute. How can we? Do y'all know? Wait a minute. Do y'all know who the winner was? I'm talking about <laughs> this young lady that can see her whole face off. Now, when y'all if y'all can go back, y'all can know that she deserved it, she won it, and she's been winning ever since. She's been winning ever since. Yeah. Wow. Yes, she has. 2009, I actually mustered up, up enough nerves to go get in that line at BET. I remember when BET was over there off Broad Island Avenue. Yep. Yes, girl. I stood in that line, and um, it was a long process, but I'm glad I stayed through it. It was actually a two-day process, and then I went on to come to Atlanta to tape once I got the go-ahead, the, the yellow slip to say that I, you know, was uh, a contestant on the show. And, um, 
you know, that experience is just one, you know, everybody see the glitz and the glamour, but it was very much so hard work. Like, wow. you don't know behind the scenes, they can change a song within an instant. Oh, and you have to learn that song on the spot and then present it to an audience without you even living it, sitting with the song. So, I mean, it was wow. a good thing because it, it helped me again to be prepared for um, this time. Like, you just never know. You can get an impromptu call to sing something and you have to be ready. So it's good to be ready than to get ready. You know? I know that's so right. That experience was really, really good. And I came out on top. Yes, you did, did girl. Winner. Yes, you yes, did. Was there ever, did there come a time, though, during that competition, y'all, if you can remember, where you said, I, 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 it's in the bag? Like, did you ever feel like I got this? Or did you feel like you never knew until the end? Um, I didn't feel like I had it in the bag. But once after I sang Grandma Pants, I feel like I gained the lives of audience yep. the audience inside and then the audience abroad like outside the network television station because i just believe that once kirk franklin called me back to sing that line again it was just like oh this chick can really blow like outside of no she just acapella just blew yeah so at that moment i i kind of figured like oh i can i can do this like i'm in the runnings but i never was to the point in my mind where i said oh i got this you know yeah. i was just riding off faith I was just asking God to continue to give me strength because I was nervous. I was really, really nervous. Um, and, um, you know, once I got down to the last two, I felt like I'm worthy of this. I did feel that. And yeah. so then I was excited when I did, um, when I was at home and we had our watch party and everybody watched, you know, I was excited when they called my name. Then I was like, yeah, I got this in the bag. Nah. <laughs> I'm getting goosebumps because I actually remember. And so I'm getting goosebumps again because I remember when that happened and I said, that's the song right there. That's it. That is it. Yeah. It's, it's about to be over. And it really wow. was. And so I have been so happy. And and I have been like a Yana groupie ever since. And of course, I'm from the DMV. So I've been to see you, see Yana do her thing on stage with Listen Band. Just all over. I mean, I, you have just been an amazing, glowing person. And I, and I know you have bad days, Yana. But I'm... Every time I've seen you do an interview, um, red carpet, anything I've seen, it's always been the same Good glowing yep. Yana, like yes. always. always. And I do have bad days, and a lot of people ask me that, but I find joy in um, what I'm doing. This right here, and I just say, you know, if you're any type, if you're in any type of field with um, public relations or just in the public eye, period, it's almost like, you know, when you go to your job, you got to set your home stuff aside in order for you to perform your job well. Yeah. So I just feel like, you know, whatever I have going on, because I pretty much, I mean, I get sad sometimes, you know, I get in my thoughts sometimes, I get frustrated sometimes or disappointed sometimes. I'm human, so I get these feelings. But when I come in front of the people and I'm talking, you ask me questions and I'm engaging. Um, it just lets me, I mean, you know, at that moment, I just sit all of that stuff aside and I deal with it, you know, after um, I'm done doing what I'm supposed to do. So yes, I always try to keep a smile on my face. I'm always trying to encourage somebody because the state of world that we in now, even before, mm. but even right now, um, specifically, like we just all need love. We all need encouragement. We all need those smiles. And if I can give it to someone to make their day, then that's just what I'm going to do. Oh my God. Yeah, that's a beautiful that situation. That is a beautiful yeah. thing. So yeah. before I know we get ready to uh, wrap it up in a few, Yana, but I just wanted to ask you, who is that one person that has inspired you to become the great singer that you are? And then two, what artist do you pop in when you're going to take that long ride? What would it be? Who would it be that you want to listen oh, wow. to? So who is that artist that inspired me? My family, first and foremost, inspired me. Um, a lot of them have been in the um, the music industry. My uncle was the late great Reverend Julius Cheeks. My um, other uncle is Glenn Jones. We've only oh, just begun. Oh, yes. yes. Yeah, that's she's a Glenn Jones he actually, Yes. Yeah, she's a he actually yes. He married my aunt, Genovia Jeter. So they would be my immediate inspiration. But my, my second two uh, none. I want to put her at numero uno. I mean, numero uno. That would be Aretha Franklin. Woo! I love that lady so much. Not just her music, but just the way she entered into gospel. Then she entered into jazz and R&B and blues. There was nothing that that lady could not sing. Yeah. So I kind of modeled myself after her. And plus, because I come from the church, knowing that her father was a minister and he pushed her to sing R&B. You know, back in the day, it was frowned upon if you come from the church and you sing R&B. It's always it was always like you going to hell. But now I just feel like 
you know, people have gotten past tradition and gotten past religion and they see that music is music and yep. it's a means to bring people together. And I always say music is the one thing that I lose myself in, but yet find myself no matter what it is. I can lose myself in the music, but yet I find myself in the lyrics because lyrics really uplift you. So Aretha Franklin would be the second. Yeah. Okay. So, so then my family, you're... then I read the Franklin. Now, who do I pop in when I'm on a long ride? Because I listen to music while I'm on a long ride. I will pop in Brandy. Mm. I will pop in Aretha. I like old stuff like Anita, like, uh, oh God, Frankie Beverly and May. Yeah. Some of the new school cats like Khaled, like Lucky Day. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So for me. You know, all the, all the yeah, good stuff. So the cool. Joe. You know, Joe. So it's all it's all of that. Yeah. It's all of so that. you like a lot of that neo soul grit. That grit. I like all of that soul yeah. singing. Like, don't give me none of that computerized, <laughs> that soul. you know, auto-tuned songs. Because yeah, when I you get it. up on stage, I, you, hey, what you doing? I mean, you're not even hitting the notes that I heard you record. So I want, I like singer-singers. Because I come from singer-singers. So I love to hear singers sing. And she's yeah. a singer-singer. Well, singer. Remember singer, we saw yeah. her at Blues Alley <laughs> singing? Uh, the most recent time that we saw Yana was at Blues Alley, up close and personal. She did the Aretha Franklin tribute. And I... It was Let amazing. me tell you something. That's when I knew news. That's when I was like, <laughs> You're oh, late. Man. You're part of this. Thank you for supporting me. Thank of you. course. Of course. But when I tell you, we, we, we rolled home and we were just talking about how your voice is so amazing. Wow. Like, we was just like, wow. wow. And then Terry was like, and I was in a play with her. <laughs> yes. Yeah. What was, that, 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 what was the name of that play? Confessions of a Side Chick. Confessions so, of a Side Remember? That's right. <laughs> it was good. That's yeah. right. Shout out to Lavelle. That was, that was, yeah, shout out to DC Black, Black, Black Broadway, Broadway and Lavelle yeah. Long. Black that was Broadway. fun. Shout out to Lavelle. Yeah. yeah. yeah for sure. That was up. a fun time. That was a fun time. All it right. Was. Well, we got to talk about really quickly your new single, um, I believe, uh, Reasons. And we need to talk about this book because I, I know about it, and but I want everyone else to know about what you got going on now, Yana, because um, you got some amazing stuff out right now. Thank you. So um, I wrote a book last October. It's called Pieces of Me, Piece Together by You. And it's a devotional memoir about my life. I'm sorry. I keep doing that. Somebody's texting me. I should have put on. <laughs> so, um, it's okay. It's um, okay. And um, um, it's really, really good because it's a 21 day. Um, it's actually it's storyline. Then it's prayer. Then it gives my little yaya moments, the, the moments that I have when I'm sitting, I'm pondering, and I want to speak and say something to encourage um, young women and men. So I think it's really, really good. A lot of people said they found themselves in my writings because I'm talking about a lot of stuff that I have not talked about. And, and, and the, the, thing, the thing I wanted to do was I wanted to go back to the little girl in me because the little girl in me was still in me as a, as a big girl, you know, as a grown woman. And sometimes we have to go back and attack those things that traumatized us when we were younger because if we don't then we carry them over into our uh, older age and we like well, why do we act like this why would he do this so they do that i'm triggered and i get angry or I get upset that's because we need healing somewhere so yes. um i just believe in my writings um i healed from my writings and i want somebody else to heal so it's a 21 day devotional memoir about my life then my new single that is our reasons Oh, the yeah. song, I love it. Yes. Um, it's just basically talking about um, God gives me the reason to smile again. You know, I can sit and I can, I can ponder, I can talk to him. But, you know, after I'm done, it's just like, okay, I, I, it's almost feel like I'm renewed. I'm rejuvenated. And he gives me that reason to smile again. And only he can do that. And only yes. his real love wins. So that's what the lyrics of the song says. You can go to my website. I got some other stuff. I am now coming up with my own, look at me, my own body yes. butter. I actually have it. I make it. It's shea butter. Oh, shea butter for your skin. Okay. Yes, yes, ah! yes. And it's really, really popping. Like some people are really latching on, it and sales are doing good. Look, this COVID has made me dig in my trick bag. I know that's say, right. Hey, yes. hey so you've been coming out revenue. with some tricks. Yes. So I have men scent and I have female scent. I also have men beard oil and I'm in the process of making some hair oil for women because, you know, I'm a licensed cosmetologist. So I'm doing all my research and all that stuff for hair growth and, you know, strengthening the hair, the elasticity and all I that good stuff. It. So I got all that stuff. I have T-shirts and everything and I'm coming out with a new fashion piece soon and i will be releasing that soon i don't want to say what it is but i'm getting on a call tomorrow to do the final touches on it Ooh. so you know what 
I'm just trying to exhaust or exude everything that God has inside of me. That's I'm just, so that proud just, of you. Yeah, What's yeah, that website awesome. where we can get all that good stuff on there? What is it? My website is www.iameanacrawley.com. Y-A-N-N-A-C-R-A-W-L-E-Y.com. You can book me through there. Um, you can go in there, um, backslash shop. You can look at the um, the store that's on there. And I got some of my writings on there also because yes. I write poetry and little uh, excerpts and all that good stuff. So you can learn me through that also. <laughs> well, we well, we love you, Yana, so much. Love and you um, too. I, um, I don't, you know, I don't have any other words to say other than you're amazing. You know you that. You are very much so amazing. So what I want to know is we don't really believe that you have a single out. So we wanted to know <laughs> if you could just sing us out of here with a little smidgen. Cause Dad said he don't believe. We just waiting on a reason. And I think <laughs> your name was a reason. So oh, that trying, was the reason. Yeah, I just needed a reason. <laughs> So I just gave you a reason. So I was wondering, was you a real singer? You know, I Stan mean, the people, he don't believe you, some Donna. people might not have heard you yet. So we want to know if you can give them a no, little smile. No, the single says, you gave me a reason to smile again. Only you can do that. Only real love wins. You made me believe that we could fly. That's why I'm giving my all for the rest of my life. I'm running to you. Yeah, yeah. Chasing after you. I don't care where I gotta go. No, no, no. Whatever you say, I'll follow your lead. Cause you're all I never need. That's it. I love her. Appreciate that. When you coming back to the DMV? When you coming home? Actually coming home next week. You I'm are? I'm actually coming home next week to see my family and things, so I'll be there for a week. So. Are you going to just yep. be chilling, or are you going to do something like where we can come and, and, and see you? Or uh, You got any work? Uh -huh. I don't have anything planned, so if okay. y'all want me to come in, that'll be cool. I can rock out with you, be a co-host, whatever. That's oh, right. That'll be perfect. <laughs> and not only that, come past the crib and get some crabs, and we're going to bust it down. How about that? Oh, no, I do that. I love crabs. So okay. I'm going to hold y'all to that. So Terry, text me. Your I will. I'm coming one day. I got you, boo. Got you. I got you, y'all. Right. All right. Y'all give it up one more time. Woo! So we have, so amazing, amazing. we have some amazing guests every yes, week. Yes, we but do. That's, this, is just, this young lady is one of our favorites because she's just the great spirit. And um, she's nothing short of amazing, as you can see. So thank yep. you again for the song that she we gave us. That was just a little bit extra. So we got to get out of here, you guys. We got to wrap it up. If you want to be a sponsor, have anything to do with Spotlight, hit us up, contact.spotlightovercity at gmail.com, contact.spotlightovercity at gmail.com. Follow us on Spotlight Over the City. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, uh, Facebook, IG, all of that Spotlight Over the City. We got to wrap it yeah, up. Yeah, and what he said, if you want to become a sponsor or put some advertisement on this Whatever amazing show, because this show is being seen right. everywhere. Yes. This is time for you all to, to, to promote your business. And, and we stuff. have reasonable advertisement, and we understand that we're under crisis situations, so we accommodate. So just That's please right. hit us up if you want to be a part of the movement. We got to go. Love you guys. Stay tuned for next week's show. It's going to be just as lit or Ooh, yes. as usual. We got, we, what we got? Mm, I'm a, it's quick. a secret. It's All right, we're going to keep it a secret, but we got something special coming up for next week. Yes. On that note, you guys, as you already know, love hard, live good, God first. Spotlight over the city. <laughs> <laughs>